If your church is live streaming while using ProPresenter 7 as your worship presentation software, then your goal should be to set up a stream output version of your graphics from the main ProPresenter computer. ProPresenter 7 can be set up to generate a dedicated version of all of your graphics independent of what your audience sees. This means that while your operator clicks through songs, sermon notes, videos, we can use looks to generate a different version of these graphics that is then sent to the stream output consisting of full screen, lower thirds, and even a blank output to allow for no graphics on the stream. With this model of the main ProPresenter 7 machine generating all our graphics for our live stream, an operator no longer has to repeat the work of the main ProPresenter 7 operator. You might not even need a graphics operator for the stream, but I do like to have the ability to have stream-specific content being played on the stream. This means it might still be nice to have a stream graphics person to monitor the status of the stream and to play those stream-specific videos but there is no need to have a second operator click through song slides, and for example. In reality, someone else like the main ProPresenter operator could even trigger stream-specific content from a Stream Deck controller. You could even find a way to automate the playback of that content, I'm sure. The goal is that this stream layer we're about to create can stay active all the time on our switcher or streaming computer. When set up correctly, the proper content, lower thirds or full screen graphics will always show up in the stream. This stream output will be sent through a physical output to your video switcher or sent digitally via NDI video over network to the receiving computer. There the video is coming in, the graphics are being added and the stream is being sent, assembled and sent out to your viewers. If this is a computer, it's likely running ProPresenter 7, OBS, Wirecast or some other software streaming encoder. Okay, so here I am inside of ProPresenter 7, and I wanna take a look at the interface and show you what we're gonna be setting up today. So when I click on a song, the first slide's the background, the second slide starts the lyrics. You can see I've got my main output version, and I've got my stream output version, and you got the stage display. And here in my template, you can also go to the uh, four multi-view, the two by two multi-view, if that works better for you. Okay, so when we click on the song here, you can see that if I go to edit actions, you can see that the look worship is set up. So when we set up songs on this ProPresenter setup here, what we do is we drag the look worship to the first slide because that sets the look for the worship. Okay, so there's also a bunch of other ones. If we go down to sermon notes, we can click on our first slide, which is going to give us our main output graphic on our main output and our stream output. And then it'll give us the next slide notes on the stage display. And so now when I click on the next slide, this is for our sermon notes specifically scriptures, you can see the scripture is on the main screen and then the scripture is set up as a lower third on the stream output. And then the stage display is again showing the current slide and the next slide. And now when I click through these notes, you can see it's, it's going through all these notes. So for sermon notes, we have three different looks, so three different macros. The first one is gonna be full screen, so we can show those full screen graphics, videos. The second one is gonna be uh, notes, and then the third one is gonna be scriptures. Uh, the scriptures one is gonna show the, sermon, the scripture reference using the label, and I have a video on that. You can go check out the specifics of how all that works, but I just wanna give you kind of a high level overview of what is happening here. So when we set up our sermon notes, we're just gonna drag the appropriate macro to each slide and I'll go back to a song and you can see that it triggers everything correctly. And now if I go into the looks, here you can see all my looks are set up. For example, worship is set with a dedicated output. Lower third is set for the output of there and then there's no media so that we don't get our motion background on that stream output. Okay, so I think that's a high level overview of what we're gonna go ahead and set up. Specifically in this video, I wanna go ahead and set up our stream output because I wanna to talk to you about how to create a stream output. So this layer here is what we're going to be creating. So the easy way to get this up and running is to purchase the ProPresenter 7 template from crazyamazingdesigns.com. In documents, after renaming your existing ProPresenter file, just drag the downloaded folder to your documents folder to install it. And now you have the exact same ProPresenter 7 layout as me, which includes the various multi-view layouts that can be configured to show any output in the two or one by three configuration. You have macros that contain pre-built looks for worship, sermon notes, videos, stream content. This is my personal Pro 7 file that I built and use on all of my machines. I think it's still extremely important that you understand how all of this is set up. So even if you do decide to purchase my file, thank you by the way, be sure to watch the rest of this video because I'm gonna show you how Pro 7 is set up and how you can build your own stream out layer. Okay, so let's dive into our screen configuration page. 
Okay, so I'm gonna go into screens, configure screens, and now I've got our main output, so this is gonna go to our main screen, and we can go to output here and assign it, or if you wanna identify what screen you're on, you can click on that, it'll really help you figure out what screen is which, because we also need to assign something to our stream output, so whether that be an NDI link, sending the video over the network, or whether that be going to a physical output to our switcher. And then we have our stage screen, which is gonna be the stage display that's also gonna get assigned an output. So I'm gonna go ahead and delete the stream output. And now I'm gonna click the plus to make a new one. And I'm gonna rename this stream output. Okay, and that should be everything we need. So now we can go out and start assigning our outputs in our looks. So we're gonna to go to screens, edit looks. So with looks, I have already set up the necessary look presets. Now we can go through and make the necessary changes for the stream output layer. So we'll start with default, and we're not gonna do any, make any changes in the default output. Let's go to worship now. So in the worship, and we're not gonna touch any of the main outputs on these, because they're already set. The stream out is what we just deleted, so we're gonna have to reset all of these up. So I'm gonna go ahead and shut off media because I don't want our motion background or any worship background to go to our stream output because we want it to be clear. And the green output that I'm currently using, so it'll come through with this theme. Okay, so now that that is select, that should work. And now we're gonna go to worship blank and I'm gonna shut all of these off. And I'm gonna select chroma blank on that one. And now I'm gonna go to sermon full and I'm just gonna go ahead and well, I'm not gonna to touch anything on that one. And now I'm gonna to go to Sermon Scripture. And for this one, I'm gonna go ahead and change my theme, go over to my uh, folder of Sermon Themes. And this is Sermon Scripture, lower third. So this is the Scripture, lower third one. And I'm not gonna shut anything off here. I think I'm gonna shut off media here, because again, I don't want any backgrounds to show up. And then for notes, I'll also shut off media. And then I'm gonna change this one to the notes, lower third. For stream blank, I think I'm just gonna shut all of these off. And then for stream blank also, I'm not sure what the difference is between sermon stream blank and just regular stream blank. So we're just gonna shut them both off on all of these. One thing really important to know about ProPresenter is I think that understanding the fundamentals of how the program works and then figuring out what you wanna do from there, I think that's a great way to learn the software. Okay, so now that the looks are set up, we can make macros to easily trigger those looks. So whoever set up the service each week is gonna to need to drag these macros to your song. So if you set up a new song, you're gonna to have to drag the look worship to that new song. Now, in ProPresenter, nothing changes unless something changes it. And that also applies for songs. So if you drag a macro to a song and then you sing it the following week, you're not gonna to have to redrag it because it's already been set up. So just for the first time, you're gonna to have to do that. And I've already created all the uh, macros here. And just to show you how to set those up, uh, right click on them, go to add action, go to audience look, and then you can pick the audience look that you want to change. So that's going to change the looks. And I also, when I set up the names, I like to uh, add look behind each of the macro. That way I know what macro is what. I'm pretty confident that in a future update of ProPresenter, they're going to give us the ability to make folders, make groups of macros, but currently we don't have that feature. So color coding is another great option, but this is how I figured out for me that it works and I don't really have a great color coding solution, even though I find that brighter color codes make it easier to see them on the slide. Like this, for example, is a dark slide and this is a light blue, so that really helps. Okay, so here I have a service order and I'm gonna go through and set up our service. So let's go to plus add playlist and we're gonna type in Sunday. Let's just go with Sunday. Okay, so now we're gonna go into our library and we're gonna pick our announcements and we're gonna drag that up into Sunday and we're gonna pick our first song, which is gonna be Good Grace. We're gonna pick our second song, which is gonna be Nothing Else. And then we, let's see here, we're gonna drag our sermon notes up there. And I think we have that, yeah, we have that little like sample, no, that's not it. Yeah, we have this like three point presentation thing as well. And then we have Waymaker, our last song. Okay, so now we've got a few songs, we've got our stuff here. And we can even go through and create headers, but there's other content out there that can show you how to do this. So for now, I'll just go make this a sermon and then make a second header. And if you need to add a placeholder, so let's say you don't know what the, the last song is gonna be. So let's see, I don't know what song four is gonna be, so I can make a placeholder for song four, and then when I figure it out, I can just go and let me just grab a random 
Oh, I have to click on it and then I drag it up into, let's see here, another fire. I drag it up into the little bar. Okay, cool. So there we go. That is our service all set up and ready to click through all of our slides. Okay, so the sec next thing I wanna do is I wanna set up my NDI layer. This layer can be set as transparent. So I'm gonna go to screens, configure screens, and I'm gonna go to stream output, and then I'm gonna set an, it as an NDI so that we send it over the network, new NDI, pick whatever setting you wanna use. And now we can make this transparent by going to alpha key, enable. Now only devices that can have alpha key enabled is going to show up this little tab. So if it's not there, it's probably because you have it either going to an HDMI output. HDMI is not capable of doing alpha key. So that's why we use chroma key, which is basically the green background that we send to a destination. And then that destination cuts it out. Okay. So physical outputs is the one last thing we can do. If we go back over to hardware. I don't have any displays plugged in right now, but we could set our stream out layer in this green configuration page to be a physical HDMI out from the computer to maybe our switcher. Again, we're going to use the chroma key once we assign it. So this will be where you just assign that and I use that identify button. That's super helpful to figuring out what you're going to be doing. Okay. This was kind of a super high level even video, even though I wanted to go into a little bit more depth, but it was still kind of high level. Um, I do have some other videos that talk about how to go into the nitty gritty to set all this up, but it's not super complicated. I just want you to understand how it works, why it works, not just that it works. Thank you for joining me on this journey of helping teams and individuals do church and event production with excellence. Please consider liking this video, subscribe to the channel, and follow along. Thanks so much for being here. Bye.